Hello everyone. In the previous video, we gone through the controller, how the controller can handle the request that come through the browser. So if you see the portion of this URL, how this segment is created in the SP.NET code, we will discuss about this thing. So in this video, we will discuss about the routing in SP.NET Core MVC and we will see what are the methods to perform the routing in SP.NET. All these things we will discuss in this video. Now let me explain you the routing first. Routing is the process through which the application matches an incoming URL path and executes the corresponding action methods. Here you can see the incoming request coming over the URL. First one is the controller and second one is the method. So SP.NET Core MVC uses a routing middleware to match the URL for incoming request and map them to specific action method. Means uses a routing middleware. So let me show in the code. If you see in the code, here the routing has been implemented. So here we have given the controller name that we can see here in the controller class and second one is the action method and third segment also you can consider as a parameter this is optional parameter so this is the way to add the middleware for the routing but this is for only one controller so can we add for more controller definitely we can add for more controllers here there are two types of routing for action methods. First one is the conventional routing. Second one is the attribute routing. So first try to understand what is the conventional routing. Here if we see, we use the map controller route method. Here we provide the name and second is the pattern. In what pattern you are should accept the request. So first one is the controller name control request to give the name and second one is the action in the action give the name here we have the default action if you see in the class this is the default method so we can give the method like this so it's called conventional routing because it establishes a conventional for url path so the first path controller request to home maps to the controller name the second segment action equals to index maps to the action name and the third segment id is used for an optional id the question mark in the id make it optional if i want to make it mandatory i can remove the question mark so sometime if i want to face the particular model or particular uh, record from the database so in this case we can use the id kind of thing in this case we can use the id this is the example here i have passed the controller name and passed the id actually index is the default method if you don't pass the index then also it will work but if you have another methods instead of the index we need to put the name so conventional method is based on the controller and action names only now we will discuss about the attribute routing as we have already conventional method then why we need attribute routing Actually, attribute routings provide us more flexibilities as compared to conventional method based routing. In attribute routing, we can manage route as controller level. Suppose you want to manage routing inside the controller, then how can you manage? So to achieve routing inside a controller, we can use the attribute routing. How to use the attribute routing? First, I can comment this existing method map control route and I can add the app.map controllers. So that's not very sufficient. Now let me add the items. URL would be same, but map controllers is called to map attribute routed controllers. So here we are calling the map controllers. So if you see in the controller, I need to put all these attributes. So on the top of the index, I need to put the route bracket blank all this would be acceptable if in the url i remove the two that is optional then also it will work if i remove the index then also it will work so all these things we need to add and apart from the index we can 
we had more uh, methods and in the method we can define the path so here you can see this is the about but in the about i have added the controller name and the action name so what action would be there so here we can rename the action that is the important thing we can configure the routing in more advanced but one more scenario here is suppose you have multiple methods so you need to define each and every time so there is one simple way you can put all this thing on the top of the home controller class so here you can see i removed from here but you need to put for the index you need to put tilde sign tilde and forward sign but for rest of the methods this common route attribute would be used so generally we use the attribute routing for the rest api should use the attribute routing to model the apps functionality as a set of resources where operations are represented by http verbs means in the http we have different kind of verbs like http post http get so that is more complex scenario so attribute routing would be useful to configure in different different ways that's all in this video in the next video we will discuss about the view how can we add the view thanks for watching this video